The following is a 360 degree video presentation best viewed on a mobile phone, tablet, or your desktop computer. We're inside a 2018 Road Trek Zion. First thing I want to tell you is that this is built on the Dodge ProMaster platform. The floors are nice. These are a vinyl floor. It's a wood floor. I like the look of them. This is all solid wood cabinetry that they do at Road Trek, which is nice. All the cabinets, I checked them, are positive locking. And the drawers are also positive locking, so they get check, check on that. Now, this particular model of the Zion has the EcoTrek, the 400 amp hours. You can see them up here. Each one of these is a 200 amp hour bank, and it has the volt start. We've done a lot of talk around all electric RVs, and EcoTrek by Roadtrek has certainly been the leader. They, are, they deserve credit for that. They've pushed the whole industry in this direction of going all electric and putting large battery banks in and large solar arrays and taking generators out and propane and things like that. So we must give credit to Road Trek for that. Uh, there have been some challenges that I've read online with regards to the EcoTrek. You need to be aware of them. You can watch my video about that. In a nutshell, not all, but some customers have challenges with battery drain on the EcoTrek modules uh, and with sometimes volt start starting up in unintended situations. Some of that could be user error. Some of that could be because the system's a little more complicated than people are used to, and so they may not be doing it correctly. I think Winnebago's lith pure lithium-3 system, they've learned from that, and they just have a one-button system to turn the system on and off to make it easier. And it would be nice to see Road Trek maybe take a cue from that as well on version 2.0 of EcoTrek, because they have the right idea, and they're giving you, you know, large banks of lithium batteries, and they're giving you things like nice, beefy underhood generators and things, lots of solar arrays. So all the pieces are there, so it would be really nice to see Road Trek step up with EcoTrek 2.0 and address some of these issues. As we go now here inside the galley, you have your marine style sink. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this because this thing here can, it, it can turn on accidentally when you put the lid down and then it can drain your water tank. So I want you to be aware of that. This does not feel like real granite. I'm not sure if it is, but I'll have to research it. I like having this brushed aluminum behind the stove around here. Not only is it safe, but it's easy to clean. I think it just yeah. looks a little nicer too. Counter flip up here is nice. You pull this up very long and you get some additional counter space here in the galley. But the problem is this is also not properly locked down, so it'll flap a little bit when you're accelerating and decelerating. Just be aware of that. And there's an AC outlet over here, a USB port, and a DC port. It's rare that you find the DC port in these vans anymore, but they've got one here, and I like that. The, there are some accessories for the car and for the RV that are DC, and so it's nice to see that DC port. Look at the aisle space here. It's huge. It's uh, over two feet of aisle width here. You're not going to be doing the galley shuffle. And then this cutback here in the galley gives you even more space. You've got a large, very large, Norcold compressor refrigerator. A rather large freezer as well. So this is not positive latching here. You can see this is a piece of plastic and there's a piece of plastic on the door. So it's not positive latching and there's a good chance that this is going to wear out or this is going to break, unfortunately. I'm really impressed with the amount of storage. Look at the size of that drawer down there. That is really neat. And you've got your pantry here, which is nicely designed, positive locking. The microwave's a bit small. Uh, it's probably under a cubic foot. Um, it doesn't have real positive latches. It does have the hooks. But I've read that these can have a tendency, if you take a sharp turn, to fly open, and then the glass tray inside can fly out. So just be aware of that. Now as we head back into the lounge, this is not leather, but the sofa folds down electronically, and it converts into a bed. It doesn't feel like the rear so, so there's not memory foam, I don't think, here. So I'm not sure about the comfort. Also, I talked about this in the five things to look out for. These are not, these ottoman cushions are in no way attached. They put a little piece of 
this thing down here to try to hold it. It's a slip pad. These are going to slide all around on you, unfortunately. They're not latched down at all. You have some good cabinet space up here. Again, positive locking. The television here is also not positively locked. As you can see here, this is what the one of the twist things I was telling you about. This just twists here. So as you go down the road, this will loosen itself like this, and then this will just come flying out like this. So they don't get any points for that, unfortunately. Here you are inside the bathroom of the Zion. It's actually a pretty good size. It looks like it's a, about the size of my ascent bathroom. Um, you have a plastic sink, but I can't complain about that. I've also got a plastic sink on my ascent. What's better about this sink, though, is on the bottom, it's finished, so you don't see all the piping and stuff like that. So this has a, a little bit more of a refined look. It's a wet bath, of course, so you're going to take your shower here. Uh, as well as have your toilet. But that's pretty common inside of these Class Bs. I have these doors on my CS Adventurous, and I wasn't a big fan of them. They are kind of clever when you go inside the bathroom. They're kind of clever because you can close them like this, you see. And then it gives you a lot more elbow room inside the bathroom. But they're not positive locking. And to positive lock it, you have to use this little pin down here, this cotter pin that you push down in order to keep the door shut. And inevitably, you're going to forget to do that. And then these doors are going to swing open while you're driving. And you're going to have to pull over. So I can't give them any points for the, the positive latching there. So I like this Zion. Um, in the front cab here, you can move the table from the rear to the front here and then swing these chairs around and you can have a front lounge, which is kind of nice. This is a very popular model for Road Trek and for RV buyers because it's built on a gasoline platform, it's short, it's maneuverable, and then the inside layout is very functional, you know, with the rear lounge back there uh, that works so well as a lounge and then works very well as a bedroom. This particular layout I like because it's wide open here, the entryway. One thing I wish they would have done is I do wish they would have taken out that wardrobe cabinet just after the, of the galley. It would have just opened it up more. But I understand why they have it in here because people want storage. The asking price for this is 111000 here at La Mesa RV. And this has been marked down substantially to 92000 so for $92,000, you are getting a great little RV, maneuverable, gas, 400 amp hours of Ecotrek lithium batteries and volt start included in that price. Plus, the best thing of all is Road Trek's six-year warranty, it's the best in the industry. Even three years better than Airstream Interstate, which is a $174,000 RV. This RV is almost half the cost and gives you twice the warranty, a six-year warranty. So kudos to Road Trek for really standing behind their products and giving you that six-year warranty. For 92000 this van comes with a whole lot. And if you're looking to get into the Class B RV lifestyle, the Zion's definitely something you should take a look at.